welcome back to my channel. I know it's been forever since I uploaded on here. So today you are going to be getting a life update from me and an explanation as to why I haven't been posting on here. But I think in order to really explain where I'm at right now and give you guys a real update, I have to kind of go through what the last three years have consisted of. I'll try and keep it brief, but I just think it'll help everyone understand where I'm at if they can know where I've been. So anyway, I just moved out of Florida. I'm back in Washington state and it feels really good to be back. I'm definitely cold, but I'm glad to be back and be around my family and my friends. So to explain the reason for my move, I want to just go through what's been going on with me, with you guys. So in 2015, I ended up taking a leave of absence from school to go train at IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida for the Paralympic Games in Rio. I ended up qualifying for Rio, but then as many of you know, I ended up rupturing my Achilles, had to withdraw from the games. It was really not a great experience, but I grew from it. There were good things and bad things that came out of my Achilles uh, rupture. Some of the good things are taught me a lot about being an athlete. You can basically do everything right and have everything lined up, have a strict diet, sleep perfectly, get all the treatment in the world and you can still lose everything from freak injuries like that. So that was a good thing that I learned from it because it taught me a lot about myself, a lot about my body, how to listen to my body better as an athlete. But one of the bad things that came out of that was that I didn't realize that an injury like that was gonna require mental healing. So I really was hyper-focused on getting better physically and I got better physically really quickly in terms of the rehab process, which is like six to eight months. I was definitely on the shorter side of that. I didn't talk to any sports psychologists or really like spend any time on mentally healing from that. I just tried to swallow, you know, all the things about it that hurt me. The fact that I lost my first games experience and the little things that come with that as far as traveling with the team and getting the gear and competing at a Paralympic Games. It was just something that I had been dreaming about and working for for so long and I didn't want to feel sorry for myself. I just wanted to get better and prove myself because I really was in a position where I was about to prove myself big time. I was just in really, really prime peak condition when this injury happened and so I just wanted to get back there as soon as possible. So that's what I focused on. And so I think that I kind of prolonged this little grieving process that was supposed to happen after my Achilles injury because I didn't realize that I was in grief from it happening. My sister ended up coming down for a camp in 2016 when I was going through rehab and stuff and then it was all kind of last minute but we decided that she was gonna come and finish her last few years of high school and live with me and train at IMG and go to school at IMG. So we had the same group of coaches, trained at the same place, we just had different training partners and trained at different times. I'm so grateful for my sister being down in Florida. It was kind of hard to manage because we went from sisters to roommates, so I kind of had to adopt this like mother-sister role. And so we both kind of had to adjust to that, but we had the best time living in Florida. We grew up running track in Washington State. It's always raining here, and we always talked about moving somewhere where it was sunny, like Florida or California, and training in the heat, and going to the beach after practice, and going to brunch on the weekends. And we really did that for a couple years. And so it's pretty cool to have lived out that little dream with my sister. So anyway, fast forward to my 2017 season. I got better, I rehabbed at IMG and Sarah was going to school and we got little Luna. And um, then nationals came for my 2017 season. And nationals in 2017 were a qualifier for world championships in London. So it kind of felt like my place to redeem myself. So at this time, training was going good. I was ready to go, you know, make a comeback at nationals. The night before I was supposed to fly to LA, I got so sick, you guys. My sister actually had been really, really sick. It was her finals week at school. And I remember telling her that she was a faker because she just was stressed out from finals and she wasn't really sick and all this stuff. And then I caught what she had and I felt so bad for ever telling her that she was faking it because it was miserable you guys it was the worst cold i had ever had so i flew over to la my coach flew over to la um and i remember sleeping in every single layer i had brought i was freezing but i had the heat all the way up in the hotel room and i tried to just sweat out my sickness so i wake up the next morning and i'm not feeling any better so i go to compete and my head's super foggy i just didn't have the same energy i normally would if i wasn't sick so my steps were totally off because my stride length was different because my energy was different um if you don't know anything about long jump then 
this might not make any sense to you, but basically I ended up jumping a distance that would have qualified me to go to Worlds, but I was jumping from a foot behind the board. So yeah, so I didn't qualify and that was brutal. This is just kind of the world of track and field. You know, you prepare all day, every day for one track meet and things happen and sometimes you know it just doesn't work out and you don't compete how you want and that's just kind of how it goes so i go back to the drawing board for my 2018 season and i'm not going to lie to you guys my motivation is not it's not an all-time high but it's not an all-time low it's just kind of like like i'm i have to try really hard to be motivated because i was less motivated on the track i think i started to find other outlets where I could express myself. Like this YouTube channel, for example, I started this in January and started pouring my energy into that. And I felt really good. A lot of good things came from it. Uh, a publishing company contacted me about writing a book. A film crew approached me about doing a documentary that was centered around my 2018 national championships. And a lot of other opportunities were presented to me. I had a couple speaking engagements. So I had those things to kind of keep my engine revved up. So I was really, really excited about this whole documentary idea. It was gonna be like a 30 minute short film on my road to my national championships. So I ended up telling the publishing company that I was gonna wait to write a book because they just had really tight deadlines and wanted a book done in like six months. And so I was like, hey, let's hold off. I wanna focus on training my nationals in this documentary and I'll you know, get back to you guys. So I go to my first big track meet of 2018. It's Mount Sac and going into Mount Sac, I had this terrible pain in my right foot. Um, and so I had my strength coach look at it initially. He thought it was one thing. So we adjusted my strength and conditioning program and then it was still hurting. So I went and saw my physical therapist who did all my rehab for my Achilles. He said it was another thing, so we tried to make adjustments for that. Uh, I ended up seeing the chiropractor. He didn't know what it was. The athletic trainers were looking at it, and eventually I went to an orthopedic surgeon before I went to Mount Sac and said, hey, listen, my foot's hurting a lot. Um, it's been this way for about a month now. Can we do an MRI? He said, you know, it's probably just some inflammation in the soft tissue in your foot. Increase your ice, make sure you're doing proper recovery, and most likely it will go away. So I ended up going to Mount Sac and I warm up for the 200 and I know it's gonna hurt, but I didn't know it was gonna hurt as bad as it did. I got out in the 200 and I literally had to jog the second half because the pain was so bad, you guys. It felt like a dagger was going through my foot. It was literally on fire. So I ended up not starting in the 100, flew home, immediately went and got an MRI. And my orthopedic surgeon, he put up the MRI and was like, you have bone edema. I'm so sorry we didn't catch this. Like this looks very painful. So if you're looking at an MRI and you're looking at bone, the inside of the bone is typically black because it's showing bone marrow. When you have bone edema, which is inflammation inside of the bone, the MRI will show up white inside of the bone. So I was sitting there looking at it with them and I was like, okay, so what is the recovery for this? And he said two, and I said weeks, and he said months. And so at this point, it's the end of April, early May, and my national championships are at the beginning of June. And so he's talking about resting through my national championships. Even if I wanted to try and compete for my national championships, I would have to do general conditioning, like a prep cycle, not a competition cycle, to get ready for a major competition that's gonna be documented by this short film that we're doing. So my head's like spinning, I'm sitting there and I ask him, so how am I supposed to prevent this from happening again? And he told me, you know, we know at this point that you have bad feet and bad ankles, so this is basically just something that you're gonna have to deal with um, as an athlete for as long as you wanna compete. I'm not knocking my orthopedic surgeon. He is one of the best in the game. He's the orthopedic surgeon for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And it's not like he told me to retire or give up, but after the previous two seasons I had had and where my mental state was at at that point in time, it really was just kind of a crushing blow to feel like it was the third season in a row where it was all for nothing. And I know that's not true because I grew and I learned so much in those three years, but it was so emotionally and mentally taxing for me um, to have to battle with that for those three years because I had still had, you know, the mental blocks from my Achilles that I hadn't dealt with and the feeling that I'm not good enough and maybe I should just quit and maybe, you know, track and field isn't what I should be 
pursuing full-time so when you're having those thoughts and feelings it does really make you question your passion level and if you're passionate enough to you know continue to pursue it because I really do believe if you're passionate about something you won't give up I really was passionate about track and field and being a part of the Paralympic movement and that's why I didn't give up after all the times I got knocked down. So I told the film crew about my injury. We ended up just agreeing that it wasn't the best time to do the film. So that was off the table. So after that, I just really was in a bad place. That's kind of what led to my absence on YouTube and Instagram is I felt like my role on social media was to encourage and motivate others, but I didn't feel good about being fake and doing that when I wasn't feeling good. And I've been in this headspace before, um, and actually social media has been something that's been able to kind of pull me out of it because I've had great opportunities to come from social media and from sharing hard things that I've been through. But this time was different and I just really needed to take a chunk of time to work on my mental health and my anxiety and decide what I was gonna do and create a plan for myself. So. My sister graduated in June and ended up committing to San Diego State University for the heptathlon. So I'm so proud of her. My whole family came down and we got this awesome Airbnb on the water. Had a grad party for her there. She graduated. And then in August, we went down to San Diego and moved her into school. And then after that, I kind of realized that I just needed a change of scenery. So that's what I've been doing for the last couple months. I've been moving out of my house and then I went to a couple concerts over the summer. My best friend's brother got married so I've kind of just been focusing on my personal life my family my friends my interpersonal relationships because I realized that when you pour yourself into social media and you want to be a creator or uh, an influencer or a public figure that it does take away from your personal life and your personal relationships. so I just needed to take a beat and get all my affairs in order. There's a lot that happened that I'm not gonna dive into in this video just because the video would be three hours long and it would be like an emotional roller coaster if I took you guys through every little thing that transpired over the last three years or even the last couple months. But I do want to share that personal stuff with you and the hard stuff with you guys because I feel like not enough people do it. I think in some of my hardest times watching other creators content and creating myself has helped me a ton so I want to continue to share my story with you guys but I just haven't felt the most comfortable doing it in the last few months. I had kind of a crazy thing happen where someone took advantage of the information that I willingly provide on here and kind of use it against me in a way not necessarily like blackmail but just um like harassment basically and so it kind of made me feel nervous and unsafe and unsure about sharing my personal life online but for me the pros outweigh the cons and if there's one person out there that my videos and my story can help then it's worth it to me Another thing I want to say about that is I think before I took this little hiatus, I was using social media as a distraction. Um, and I think that's pretty normal for a lot of people to turn to it when life really isn't going how you want it to. And so I think with my YouTube videos earlier in the year, I was helping other people go through what I had already been through by sharing how I overcame what I've already overcome. But in doing that, I was avoiding going through what I really had to deal with and what was in front of me. Um, and so I was kind of hitting this block where I would try to create, um, but then I was having these feelings of why is what I have to say helpful and I'm not even in a good headspace, so how can I be helping other people? And so I really had to get through that and get over that in order to start producing quality content for you guys. So right now I'm just trying to create, oh, come on. I hope that helps you guys understand why I've been so inactive on YouTube and Instagram and hopefully you guys will continue to follow my journey and that's where I've been for the last few months. That's what I've been doing. I moved back home. My sister's in college. I feel like my daughter went to school. She's you know, living her young adult life now and I just kind of have to regroup and figure out what I'm going to do next because I feel like I've been kind of hyper focused on her and not really sure of what I want to do and what path I want to take. 
Um, I don't know if anyone else has struggled with this, but sometimes it just feels like there's so many options that you're paralyzed by it. Like you can't pick one because you feel like it's gonna be the wrong way to go and you're gonna regret it later. But I made a commitment. I decided to move back home and figure out what I'm doing, so that's where I'm at. And it feels good, it feels good to be back to my roots. Sometimes you just have to return to that to remember how far you've come and when you're surrounded by people that love you and care about you and know who you are, it gives you a sense of comfort because it reminds you that you're not alone and you know you have come a long way despite whether or not it feels like you have. So anyway, I wanna continue sharing my journey with you guys and I hope that you wanna continue watching. I'm gonna start putting out videos every week. I'm gonna be cranking them out. I got lots of work to do, so thank you guys for staying subscribed. If you're not, go click it because I have lots of great content coming that I know you guys are gonna enjoy. Anyway guys, that's my update, that's where I'm at. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I will be responding to comments all day. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.